Hey everybody, it's Mike Nelson from EfficientLending.net. First and foremost, I want to wish you all a happy new year. I uh, hope you had a great holiday season. Merry Christmas to you. It is the day after Christmas and it is a cold, blustery, kind of wintry day here in Colorado, which is a little different because it's been really warm actually so far this winter. And I uh, thought I'd uh, put up my first YouTube video for uh, 2018. Pretty excited about uh, kicking off the new year. So, uh, the video I'm going to talk about today, this is going out to my real estate agent partners out there. And really, uh, buyers can look at it as well. And one of the, I was kind of thinking back over successes, great things, things I wanted to work on from 2017. And one of the reoccurring themes is pre-approval letters. How do you tell if you're an agent or if you're on the receiving end as a buyer or you're a buyer's agent, how do you tell is that pre-approval letter worth anything? Is it worth the paper it's written on? And I think there's a lot of confusion around pre-approval letters. I think there, this, this topic could stand, you know, a lot of a discussion. And hopefully I'm going to give you three questions and some background on those questions that if you're a listing agent, uh, ask these three questions to the buyer's agent. And if the buyer's agent doesn't know the answer to these questions, then the loan officer really hasn't done their job all that well. But then you can pick up the phone and you can call the lender. I get lender, I get calls from agents all the time on the listing side about the quality of my pre-approval. Got to be honest with you, kind of puzzles me a little bit. I represent the buyer. And so, you know, I have to know the quality of my buyer prior to issuing that lender so that letter so I've issued the letter there has to be a good assumption a good strong reasonable assumption that this buyer is going to qualify for this loan whatever it may be on the purchase contract so when that I get that call from that listing agent and they start asking me questions that I just simply can't answer because it's protected under privacy laws. It's clear to me that we, you know, need some discussion on the most effective way to evaluate that lender letter. So let's get right into it. Here are the three questions. Number one, is this a pre-approval letter or is it a pre-qualification letter? It's an important question. Uh, I'm going to dive into that in just a second, give you some more information on that one as well. The second question, number two. What documents do you, the lender, the loan officer, have in your possession and have you reviewed in providing this lender letter to the buyer? What documents have you seen? It's a question I can answer, and uh, I have specific answers for that. And, you know, I can answer that question without violating privacy laws, which is a good thing. And you're going to know from my answer how well I've evaluated this potential buyer. And the third question, I love this question. It's my favorite. What are the findings? D-U-L-P, what are the findings? And if you as an agent don't know what that means, which is perfectly fine, I have to be honest, most agents don't, this is a vital question and one that will tell you how good a job the uh, loan officer has done in evaluating uh, this potential buyer. All right, that's it. Ask those three questions uh, and I think you'll have a really good idea of the credit worthiness for this buyer. So let me, let me provide a little more information. Here's your letter pre-approval, pre-qualification. Both have value, uh, one a lot more than the other. A pre-qualification letter just assumes that I've had some type of verbal interaction, communication uh, with that potential buyer, haven't seen documents, haven't pulled credit, certainly don't have findings. So is it value? Sure, uh, there's value there. But do I really know the credit worthiness of the buyer? I really don't. Uh, so a pre-approval letter, conversely assumes that I have seen a minimum standard or minimum level of documentation. I've seen it, I've reviewed it, have it in my possession obviously, so I have a better idea of uh, the credit worthiness for that, for that buyer. Okay, so that leads me into the second. So you, you always want a pre-approval letter versus when you're in the purchase contract stage obviously. That leads me to the second question. What documents to have, have you seen? What do you have in your possession to evaluate this potential buyer? Let me tell you my minimum standard. And this is, I'll put this in air quotes. This is a full doc pre-approval letter. Those are the only letters I issue. The reasoning behind that's pretty simple. My ability to grow my business. Uh, I need referrals from the buyers, listing agents and sellers agents. And if I don't issue a quality pre-approval letter, it's really costing me a lot of money, but also the agents and the buyers, it's just bad. So I have a pretty high standard for my pre-approval letter, and it's, I'll put this in air quotes, it's almost a full doc. It's technically not a full document pre-approval. There are other things I don't have, like driver's licenses and things like that. 
but it's pretty close. So here's my minimum standard um, that I have for um, a pre-approval letter. Two years tax returns, two years W-2s or 1099s, whichever works out that way. 30 days pay stubs, two months uh, asset accounts could be, uh, you know, depending on the loan type, uh, could be um, uh, IRS, 401ks, uh, bank statements, checking statements, just depends on what we're doing here with this loan. Uh, have to have a tri-merge credit report. Have, that's minimum standard. So you can have FICA scores, things and the not. And if there's bonus or commission income in there, I need to see that two-year history. So that's my that's my minimum standard um, for a pre-approval letter. Is it exhaustive? Actually, it's not. There can be other things that come into play as we get further down into the, the uh, underwriting process. But when I have that minimum set of documentation, I really have a very strong idea if this potential buyer is going to be um, uh, pre-approved uh, towards the end of the loan. All right. And one other thing I want to say about income qualification, and this is important, USDA, VA, Fannie, Freddie, FHA, all of these loans have different income requirements and different ways in which, especially USDA and VA, in which income can be looked at. So you need to understand, and the loan officer need to understand, needs to understand what type of loan is going to be used. It's very important in assessing the validity of a pre-approval letter. Okay, last question, and then we'll wrap it up. And this one is super important. Do they have DU or LP findings? If you are a listing agent, just ask that question just like that. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Loan Officer, do you have LP or DU findings? If the loan officer does not understand the question, you've got problems, okay? DU, desktop underwriter, that is the underwriter that runs on the desktop of the loan originator according to um, uh, Fannie Mae guidelines. Uh, loan prospector or LP, it runs on your desktop. It runs through loan prospector, which is Freddie Mac. So my loan origination system we use in Compass is connected to DU or LP depending on the loan we're running. When I've essentially built the file to its uh, complete state, I can run DU, I can run LP, and it's going to basically give me a result that says, yes, they are approved and eligible for this loan. Okay. Then it also gives me a report of certain strengths, weaknesses, conditions, things that I'm going to have to collect in the documentation collecting phase to get this uh, buyer through underwriting. Now, here's what you got to know. The debt to income ratios, loan to values, all those are taken into account in DU and LP. If I don't have good information from documents that I've seen loaded into my loan origination system, Encompass, Calix, Point, you'll hear those names, I can't run a good DU or LP file. So, I, so it behooves me to see the documents, have them in my possession, I can run the findings, and now I have a really good idea if this buyer is going to pass. Okay, pretty complex, got into the weeds a little bit here. Look, here's a quick recap. Is it a pre-approval, pre-qualification letter? What documents do you have in your possession that you, re you have reviewed? Do you have findings? Do you or LP? Okay? Ask those questions. Depending on your interaction, you are going to get a good idea from either the buyer's agent or the loan officer if this is a well-qualified buyer. Look, there's a lot of complexities and nuances that I've gone over pretty quickly here. Feel free to call me, text, email. I'd love to continue the dialogue. Hope this was helpful. Love to meet new people. Chat with me anytime. Hope you have a great 2018, and I wish you the absolute best of success. Thanks again.